Hello, my name is Yemi. And my name is Ichoma. And together we host Africa in My Kitchen, a podcast that is produced by Tunuka Media. This fun podcast explores meals from each country in Africa. We talk about the country, discuss the meal itself, and draw from our experiences to share why we are, or are not, excited about the meal. A new episode airs every two weeks. So John is for the hits, the misses, the laughs, and the cringes as we eat our way across the continent. Come back often, share with your friends, and add the podcast to your regular podcast rotation wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, it's time for this week's episode. Start recording in three, two, one, go. If you dream of moving mountains tomorrow, you must start by lifting small stones today. Hello, friends. Hi, that quote is actually a proverb from the country we are in today. We are in Equatorial Guinea, and our dish of the day is called Aquadu. Equatorial Guinea is interesting because it is the only African country that has Spanish as its official language. Bet you didn't know that. It was colonized by Spain until 1968. Equatorial Guinea sits on the west coast of Central Africa, and it is made up of an insular region and a mainland region. So the insular region has two islands, and Malabo, which is the capital city, is on one of these islands. The mainland area is called Rio Muni. The two regions are separated by another country called Sao Tome and Principe. And here's a random fact. A citizen of Equatorial Guinea is called an Equatorian. I did not know that. It's a mouthful, eh? Yet it is also fun fact, both countries are really beautiful. When it comes to the cuisine of Equatorial Guinea, you'll find a lot of things we've talked about before, like yam, cassava, peanut sauce. But sometimes you'll find animals like antelope and crocodile, which are less familiar. You'll also find a lot of fish and lobster in the coastal areas. Black tea with milk is also quite popular and multiple sources call it the national drink of Equatorial Guinea. It is called Osang tea. Have you ever had crocodile? I have. No, actually, oh. no, I had alligator. It was fed to me. What? Oh, yeah, there's a story there. Essentially, this woman... Wait, sorry, why do you sound so angry? Like, I'm still... The anger still emanates from inside my soul. Okay, get to the story. 20 years ago to today. So because I went to boarding school, um, I generally had to travel away from the state I lived in to another state where my school was. So for the first little while before my parents got us a place there, we stayed with this person. I want to glorify her name with saying her name because I still feel resentment for this particular dish she made me. Wow. Yeah, I'm still really bitter about that. Anyway, so when we got there, I had told her I really don't like fish. And I was like, it's okay. I'll eat all my food without any proteins on it. I'll just eat whatever. And she kind of bullied me into eating this meal and she's like no it's not fish it's just something different try it you might like it and she's much older you know in our culture respect 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 and it got it actually got really awkward because i kept saying i didn't want to eat any and she's like oh just try it just try it just try it anyway i tried it and i was like i don't know it doesn't taste like fish it doesn't smell like fish it looks kind of dark but all right we'll see and so i tried it and she was like watching over me and then after i finished eating it She's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you just ate alligator. And I threw up so hard. I actually cried because I felt betrayed by an adult that was... It wasn't fish. It wasn't, but it was like, why didn't you tell me what it was? Oh. Give me the option to choose or not choose. Because she essentially bullied me into eating that meal. And mm-hmm. but anyway, let's not get too much off course. I disliked fish before. Since then, I blatantly hated it. <laughs> but it's why are you blaming fish for what an alligator did to I you? I don't know. Just adults need to know that they can cause long term trauma to kids. That is true. <laughs> yeah, I know this was happening. All I was going to say, because when I asked if you had eaten crocodile, I was just going to say, like in primary three, my teacher brought crocodile to school one day and she was eating and I thought it was weird. And so I was just like, oh, by the way, I have this teacher who wants a crocodile. Have you had crocodile yummy? And then she tells us this story from the recesses yes. of her soul. Traumatic story. I remember it like it was yesterday. I'm so sorry I asked. Ugh. 
<laughs> okay, let's. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think they're on a different show. Sorry, guys. This no, is- this this is Africa in my kitchen, guys. Come back, come back. In my kitchen is not about <laughs> therapy. Is not about me finding myself anymore. I'm good to a certain extent. But <laughs> you're on the right show. Don't change the station. <laughs> okay, guys. Let's go back to our main dish and talk about aquadu. Aquadu is a plantain dish. It can be eaten for breakfast, but it also makes a pretty good dessert especially if you choose to eat it with banana instead of plantain. So you can go with one or the other. We decided to make it with plantain. Uh, please note that you make it with ripe plantain because it's supposed to be a kind of sweet dish, but not too ripe. So how do I describe this? So you have unripe plantain is usually green and hard. Overripe plantain looks more like a squishy banana. It's really overripe. So black on yeah, yeah. And sometimes you can even have like plantain that's yellow, but still a little too soft. So this one should still be a little bit firm. Yeah, it should just feel like an, just a ripening avocado. That's the kind of feeling it should have. Oh, okay. Soft, but just, just bouncy enough. Okay. Um, so you can, like I said, you can go with either banana or plantain. But I went with plantain because I was curious to see what it would taste like. Usually when you think banana, you bake banana with sweet stuff. That happens a lot. There are lots of banana um, desserts like that. So I wanted to try it with plantain. Um, so for our first time listeners, and because we recognize the fact that not all our listeners are from the continent, there is a big difference between a banana and a plantain. Yes. So, yes. Uh, and I thought I would chime in here. So a banana, you can eat almost raw, like you can peel it off and just eat it right away. Plantain, you almost always have to, actually, not almost. No, always. not almost always. You should always cook it. Plantain, you should always cook. So they're very different. So when we say plantain, we mean plantain, not banana plantain, not plantain banana, really plantain. plantain. Separate like from banana. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to make that distinction for those who, because they do look alike. The plantain looks sometimes it looks a little bit bigger. They look different when they are ripened. Most importantly, the grocery store labels them, so you can actually tell which one is the plantain. There's, there's that too. Let's let's keep yes. it let's keep it silly simple. Let's keep it simple. Like just check if you see something. I feel like instinctively you might see something and think, "Oh, is that a banana?" If you have to question it, just check the name to make sure it's banana and not plantain, or not you know, plantain and not banana, basically. Mm-hmm. Another way to tell, though, is if you have something that's yellow and ripe, like you can't open up a plantain as easily as you would a banana. You almost have to cut the head off and then peel it. So peeling it is not as easy. Please, for the love of the Lord, do not try to eat plantain without cooking it. Well, if you try, you know, it's not our fault. That's we won't you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so like we were saying, the plantain should be ripe, but a little bit firm. Uh, how Purdue works is you, it's basically baked plantain in butter, honey, a little bit of lime and topped with shredded coconut. You can probably use sweetened coconut actually, but I used unsweetened because I wanted to tone it down a bit. We already had the honey and the sugar and all of that stuff. So I figured let's try it with unsweetened coconut. And we are applying to Fit Farm, so we don't want our application to the Fit Farm family to be rejected. Yeah, I know. I mean, we've already smothered it in honey, orange juice, and sugar. We're not going to like take it overboard at all by adding like sweetened coconut. Wow. I mean. <laughs> So this is a baked dish, like we said. You slice your plantains um, lengthwise, you put it in a baking dish, and then you pour melted butter, honey, and orange juice, and a little bit of lime juice or lemon juice over it. And then depending on how sweet you want it to be, you sprinkle some brown sugar over the plantain, and then also sprinkle some shredded coconut, and then you bake. So if you're using plantain, you bake for at least 20 minutes because it'll take a little bit longer to cook. If you are baking... If you're using bananas, bananas should only take about 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And the banana shouldn't be overripe as well. So the same the same recommendation for the plantain where it shouldn't be too ripe, that applies to the banana at the same time. Mm-hmm. What did you think of it, Yanni? First of all, I had it with ice cream. So I had it with vanilla ice cream. Oh, ice cream is so good, y'all. Anyway, so I had it with ice cream. I remember when you handed it to me, you asked me to try three different ways, right? Like hot, mm-hmm. warm, and cold. Mm-hmm. and like goldilocks the warm was a sweet spot the hot i found was a little bit too hot i was kind of trying not to burn myself so by hot you like you mean the actual temperature of the food yes okay well there's no spice so there's no pepper so I don't know. I don't some know. people I don't find know. pepper in the weirdest things i don't know 
know what else I would literally be talking about in a dessert. So yeah. anyway, so um, the hot was too hot, but so the temperature was cooled down by the ice cream, which was kind of okay, but it kind of felt like I was eating two separate things. The cold became, it felt kind of hard. So it wasn't quite as soft and it had hardened a little bit. And by the time I had it with ice cream, you know, you know that thing when it's too cold in your mouth and it does that chin chin chin. I don't know how to explain it. You know when it's what? <laughs> you know when so when it's too cold and Oh like um like um brain freeze, like if your teeth are sensitive or if you have brain freeze. Okay. So the cold one punished me with brain freeze. So I was like, Nabu. So then I went to the medium one. So the medium one was perfect. It was kind of like eating a warm brownie with ice cream because it was warm enough that it didn't completely melt the ice cream, but it was mm-hmm. cold enough that it didn't burn my mouth. That being okay. said, I find this is an amazing thing for people to make, especially at like parties or get togethers. Or if you're going over to um, a potluck, I mm-hmm. think it's really amazing as a dessert because it's very different. Mm-hmm. And the combination of the coconut plus the sweetness of the plantain blended together with the honey. Oh, Lord. You sound like you really liked it. I did. I did. Oh. That's a very long winded way of me saying I liked it. But the medium one, not the hot or cold. But okay. that one. Oh. In fact, the only thing is that it doesn't keep very well, very long. No. You know, if you're going to make it, don't waste food. You know, we don't waste food around her. So make just enough that you can consume or your guests can consume. But highly recommend 10 over 10. Yeah, and it's simple to make too. Like, you just dump stuff. Most of the things you already have, except for maybe the plantain, maybe the coconut, dump it, bake it, and you're done. That's interesting. I, for me, it was just okay. The, I know, oh, you should see her eyeballs. Maybe because it's sweet. I don't know. Um, also plant. I, I found it a little bit tart because I had like, I, th- I think maybe there was too much lemon in it for me. If I were to make it again, I would use a little less lemon because the recipe I used called for two lemons. Now, the thing is, when it comes to fruit, things like lemon and oranges and things like that in general, size matters, right? So what somebody can call two lemons could be two small lemons, two large lemons. It's very subjective. So I don't know if maybe I used more lemon than the recipe called for, but I found it a little bit tart. And the tartness came through when it was warmer, kind of like, so I didn't really enjoy it hot. I liked it a little bit warm, just like you. I didn't really try it cold. So I don't know why I told you to try cold. That's actually kind of funny because you said cold and I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess that was just you. We did agree that I would be the taster slash test subject. So. Oh, okay. There you go. I guess. Um, so warm, I liked it best. Uh, it was just okay for me. I think if I tried it again, I might try it with banana mm-hmm. instead of plantain. Funny enough, which is odd because plantain is always correct. Plantain is always king. Yeah. And... Yeah, and I definitely, I liked the lemon because it stopped it from being like syrupy sweet, but I thought it was a little bit too much. But all in all, like you said, it's nice. You get the balance right. It's a quick, easy, different dessert to take. And I don't know if you're supposed to have it with ice cream, but just like you, I had it with ice cream and the ice cream really rounded it out nicely for me. Mm-hmm. I think I had it with Elk Mountain ice cream or something, which is like peanut butter, chocolate chip, and vanilla mixed together. My mind, I'm just like closing my eyes and like, trying to remember the taste in my mouth it was so good interesting <laughs> i really liked it and uh, yeah anyway you, you guys know when i like something i just ramble on and on when i don't i'm just like it was yeah it was okay but <laughs> <laughs> but this one i and in fact if you want to go to you know thanksgiving if you're in the states thanksgiving is coming if you're in canada well we already passed thanksgiving but if you're in the states or some other places thanksgiving is coming family gatherings are coming you want to stop the party? Do you want to stand out? Bring this with you. Trust us. And if anybody asks you about the recipe, please don't forget to tell them not to try to taste plantain raw. That too. That can go south really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can go south. And that's navigation type thing. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it can go south. And that brings us to the end of another episode. As always, thank you so much for listening. Let's do this again in two weeks when we head back to the Horn of Africa. However, before I leave, I did want to make a quick plug. If you haven't yet, 
um, make sure you check our Instagram page. In between the bi-weekly episodes, we do post info posts about the country we spoke about last. You know, just something to keep your brain juices flowing while the food juices are still cooking. And so we will see you again in two weeks when we head back to the Horn of Africa. Till then, see ya. Thank you for listening, friends. As a reminder, the podcast is released every two weeks. Follow Tunuka Media on social media, including Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter to connect with us and be on the forefront of upcoming shows and program schedules. Links are in the show notes. Africa in My Kitchen is produced by Tunuka Media and co-hosted with 234 Pantry. So while on Instagram, follow my page, 234 Pantry, for more food-related content and fun facts about dishes and ingredients. Tunuka Media also produces another show called Overlooked, which I host with more shows on the way. Like and subscribe, and if you learn something new, support the show by giving Africa in My Kitchen a high rating wherever you listen. This helps the show grow and gets more people, just like you, to learn also. So until next time, bye! bye.